destination wedding planning tips. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey friends, it's Cara, and I believe that every engaged couple should enjoy the expertise of a down-to-earth, honest, and professional wedding planner. Join me each week on the Wedding Planning Podcast for straightforward wedding planning advice designed to streamline and simplify your wedding plans. If you are newly engaged and wondering where the heck to even begin with your wedding planning, be sure to visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash learn more and sign up for our free engagement starter kit video series. Enjoy the show. Today's show is all about destination wedding planning, and this episode has been in the works for a long time. I've heard from a lot of you who are planning destination weddings and are having kind of a challenging time getting things started. Uh, Destination weddings definitely come with a special set of challenges because you're planning a wedding that is in many cases thousands of miles away from where you live, and that can be really stressful. So today I'm going to share a pretty specific list of questions that I received from a listener named Christy. She really addresses all aspects of what you should be considering if you're planning a wedding away from home at a resort or a vacation spot. So I'm going to read her email in entirety, and then we will revisit each of her questions in detail and get everything straightened out. Hi, Cara. I'm recently engaged, and my fiancé and I want to plan a small destination wedding at an all-inclusive resort in the Riviera Maya area of Mexico for February of 2018. I'm having a hard time finding solid advice on how to get started with the planning. I have so many questions and I'm hoping you might be able to answer a few or at least point me in the right direction so we can start planning our dream wedding. First question, how do we select a resort without seeing it in person? We've been to the Riviera Maya area for vacation, but we don't want to get married at the resort where we stayed. There are so many resorts to choose from, but it seems like most of them have very few wedding specific pictures on their websites. We want to get married on the beach, but would like a semi-private area for the ceremony so that we don't feel like everyone at the beach is part of our wedding. Is it acceptable to contact various resorts and ask for additional photos to aid in our decision? Next question, should we work with a destination wedding planner or should we work directly with the resort's on-site coordinator? My fiance is fluent in Spanish, so communication shouldn't be an issue if we run into any language barriers with the on-site coordinator. If we don't work with a destination wedding planner, should we work with a travel agent that our guests can go through to book airfare, or should we simply provide the dates and location and allow our guests to research their options and book flights on their own? We will have guests coming from both the west and east coasts of the U.S., so not everyone will be on the same flight or arriving at the same time. Many all-inclusive resorts have pre-planned wedding packages to choose from. Can we request some customization, specifically the type of flowers? I definitely want a bouquet of bright tropical flowers and have an inspiration board on Pinterest so that I can easily share pictures. And lastly, do you have any other advice or tips for planning a Mexico destination wedding? I really enjoy listening to your podcast and I'm anxious for some advice on planning our wedding. Thank you, Christy. Christy, thank you so much for your email. And as everyone can hear, Christy is putting a lot of thought into getting her destination wedding set up just right. Let's go back and take her questions one by one. For those of you out there who are considering or committed to a destination wedding, these questions really touch on all aspects. So first off, selecting a resort without seeing it in person. This is really tricky. It's definitely an added layer of difficulty in the planning process when you're dealing with a destination wedding. My best advice here is to do an insane amount of research into past weddings that have been hosted at the resort. You can do this via social media, via internet searches, on travel websites, and of course, 
specifically asking the venue to share some really detailed testimonials, reviews, and photos of past couples who have gotten married there. This ties right into your next question. Is it acceptable to ask for additional photos? Absolutely. As many pictures as they can provide. Maybe you can be in touch directly with wedding photographers who have shot previous weddings at these resorts, and they can share some of those past wedding photos with you directly. The bottom line is that Photos and reviews, testimonials from past couples who've been married at the resorts you're considering, these are going to be your only way to, quote, see exactly what you're going to get, right? Because you can't go there in person. So you're really relying on all of these information sources to do your homework for you and be sure that you've made the right decision. With that said, a resort that specializes in or is advertising itself as a destination wedding venue, they should be very well prepared to share a wealth of information with you. They should be very familiar in working with couples who won't be able to visit in person before selecting that venue, and they should be able to approach this with professionalism and with ease. If you're getting any feelings like you are not seeing everything you want to see or there simply isn't enough background information by way of photos or reviews from other couples, then I would encourage you to keep shopping around. In today's world of social media and online travel sites where users can add extensive reviews and ratings and really share their experiences, you should encounter a lot of transparency when doing this type of research. If a venue is being odd about sharing information with you like additional pictures or user reviews, then I would kind of consider that a red flag. And again, if they're billing themselves as a destination wedding venue, all of this information should definitely be available. Next question, should we work with a specialty destination wedding planner or should we use the resort's on-site coordinator? This is going to depend heavily on having lots of conversations and going with your instinct. If you can find a resort that really checks out with regards to photos and reviews and you have a few conversations with the weddings and event manager and you feel really comfortable and really confident with those interactions and those conversations that you've had, then I think it would be easiest to use the venue's on-site coordinator. Now, let me pause here and back up just a bit. I can also see a situation where you kind of work backwards. So instead of starting with the question of what resort should we choose, another way to approach your planning could be what wedding planner in Riviera Maya should we use? And then after you've chosen the wedding planner who you totally trust and really get along with and get really good vibes from, you could ask that planner to recommend you their favorite venues. So again, instead of starting with looking for the venue, you could actually start by looking for the coordinator and then use their recommendations as far as which venue is their favorite to work at. Instead of relying on your own research into reviews and online photos and talking with each individual resort, you would be putting your faith into a professional wedding planner who has hopefully coordinated hundreds of weddings in the area and has a very solid recommendation for their top spots. Again, to recap on the coordinator question, I think it's going to depend on your comfort level with the people you speak with, and you should definitely follow your instincts. I don't want to definitively say that one or the other would be better. I think it really boils down to the coordinator who you feel most comfortable with. Next question is about the actual travel plans. Should we work with a travel agent or should we let our guests research and book on their own? 
I think offering both options for your guests is a wonderful idea. And this way, if someone doesn't want to do the independent research and their own booking, they would have the option of just picking up the phone and calling a specific travel agency to handle all of those details. I would recommend calling a couple of different travel agencies and getting an idea of how they would handle a group booking situation, what types of commissions they charge, etc. For those of your guests who are very travel savvy and can easily hop online and book their own travel, I would make that an option as well. If people have really flexible travel times, then booking on their own could end up being much less expensive than booking through an agent. So either way, I do think it's nice to give your guests the option of either using an agent or simply doing it on their own. Next up is can we request customization in the packages we select? This will depend on the resort, and it should definitely be one of your top questions as you research potential venues. I would say that yes, definitely there should always be an option to select some sort of specialty customization. And again, I think this is a top question that you should be asking all of your prospective resorts. The degree of flexibility and the degree of customization that they are willing to do might depend on the location, so you're simply going to have to ask. And my final round of tips and advice for those of you who are planning a destination wedding, I'll mention quickly to be sure in your save the dates indicate if an international passport will be required for travel. Obtaining a passport can be a somewhat lengthy process and it becomes really stressful and really costly if it's left until the very last minute. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope you found today's episode helpful if you're planning a destination wedding or if you're in the early stages of planning and you're considering a destination wedding. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find a full blog post on today's episode by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co backslash destination dash wedding. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For details on any links and resources mentioned in today's show, be sure to take a peek at the show notes on your mobile device. You can also head over to weddingplanningpodcast.co for a complete library of past episodes and to sign up for weekly show notes and resources delivered straight to you via email. Until next time, have a great day, happy planning, and I can't wait to chat again soon. Cheers! Cheers!